for the like grand entrance. <laughs> um, I'm going to hand it over to him. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sally. I'm really happy to be here today. So for those of you who don't know what I do, I have a business called Living Beauty Fitness. And this is a 12 year old business. Um, so I've been in business quite a while. And um, I also have two beautiful children. I have a one year old, Alessia. And straight before coming here today, she was running up and down the hallway, pushing chairs or her walker or anything, random furniture that she can push around. I'm so excited to see her first steps. I think she's gonna walk within the next couple of weeks. I also have Orlando, he is four and a half, and everything is no. <laughs> Would you like to have your dinner now? No. Are we gonna put our shoes on? No. And as you know, it can be quite frustrating when you have to go to work and you're trying to get your children ready, but it can be a 20 minute process just to get them to put their shoes on. These are the things that people do not tell you about parenthood. <laughs> so today I could, I guess, go on about the accolades I have received. Um, I do have a Master of Business degree. I have written for health and fitness magazines for 10 years. Um, I've also won numerous fitness competitions. Um, one of my best achievements is the hundreds of women that I'm able to help every year through my coaching business. But really, that doesn't mean much to me. What life is about is being able to help people. That gives me greatest reward. But I was also really surprised when I became a mum, the incredible, immense feeling of love that I have for my children that far overrided any accolade, any achievement that I've ever made in my life. And that was something that was so beautiful and surprising to me because you know, that moment that you give birth to your child is just incredible and you just think, wow, like nothing ever could exceed this feeling. No accolade, no qualification, no achievement. Hands up anyone else that felt like that. <laughs> so today I wanted to cover, first of all, a little bit about networking and in particular networking face to face. Then I wanted to cover social media. And the final thing I'll be covering is self-care, which is something in my business that I'm quite passionate about. So let's begin with networking. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story about last year because the last 12 months have been very eventful for me. So I had um, my baby on the 15th of March and I decided to set myself two really bold goals for last year, which were just ridiculous. I was so fearful that I wouldn't achieve them and I was thinking to myself, Am I crazy? Am I a complete idiot for setting these goals that scare me? One of my major goals was to fly to the US, attend one of the biggest and most prestigious fitness and business conferences. And I set that goal for October when my baby was born in March. So <laughs> it was a real stretch. I actually didn't book the flight to a few weeks before because I wasn't sure if I was gonna make it. And I said to myself, and my husband, you know, this is something I really want to do, but if the kids aren't good, if, you know, they're not behaving well, and if it's too stressful for you, I'm happy not to go, but I really want to do this. So I grabbed an early bird conference ticket, and I just, every night was thinking, oh, I really hope I can pull this off. It did happen. I flew to um, LA on my own. I've never been to the US before. And then I had to fly to Phoenix, Arizona, and for some stupid reason in my mind, I thought the scariest part would be being in an airport and finding out where I had to go. No, that was not scary. Mm. What was scary was being um, among a conference of 300 people and being the only Australian person there. So I didn't know a soul. Um, there was a whole mix of different people there. But one thing I did know was that it was gonna make me grow as a person to push myself out of my comfort zone. And that basically by attending a conference in fitness and business, it wasn't just gonna teach me how to be a, a better fitness professional, but it was going to teach me how to be a better business person. And that was what I wanted to do. I wanted to learn from these Americans who have a massive population and have really quite far advanced marketing techniques that we do, and I wanted to bring that back to Australia. So here I am with this Aussie accent, rocking up to <laughs> this conference on the first day, and I just have to, um, you know, basically go up to a circle of women that I've never met before and say, hi, my name's Amelia, um, and what do you do? 
One of the biggest tips that I can give you if you're feeling really, really nervous with face-to-face -face networking is spend 99% of the time asking about the other person. So often we feel so nervous, we're thinking, oh my goodness, what are we going to say after hello? Are they going to be judging me? Are they going to be looking at what I'm wearing? Or are they just going to basically turn their back and walk off? But face-to-face -face networking is where the magic happens. If you cannot create a presence in a room, if you cannot walk into a room and basically approach people, it's going to be difficult for you to accelerate your business to where you want to take it. So day after day, session after session of this three-day conference, I forced myself to go up to people that I've never met before. On day two, there was such a beautiful group of girls that I met that all of a sudden were saying to me, hey, do you want to come for lunch with us? Or, hey, we've got the cocktail party tonight, you know, come to our hotel room and get ready, and then we'll have some drinks and we'll go together. So by pushing myself out of my comfort zone, by flying to the US on my own, leaving my children with my husband, and luckily he supports me and he took two weeks off work um, to look after the kids. Um, this was something that I learned so much about business, but that was because I put myself in a situation that I found so scary, that I thought, what happens if I go up to people and they just turn their back and walk off? And you know what? There were people that turned their back and walk off. There are a few girls that I went up to to say hi, and they literally turned their back on me. But I mean, that's the worst thing that can happen, isn't it? And at the end of the day, we have to be um, not scared of failure. We have to not be scared of the people that aren't going to help us on our journey. And through that, I've now remained in contact with 10 girls from the US. I follow their social media, I learn from them. And from that conference, in the first two months after that conference, I tripled my business income just by pushing myself out of my comfort zone by not worrying if I went up to someone and they turned their back on me, by making myself feel like an idiot being the only person in the room with an Aussie accent. <laughs> so hopefully that can give you a little bit of a story about how face-to-face -face networking can be so powerful. We all love social media, we all love you know, seeing what other people are doing, following people's journeys um, and seeing what you can do on social media. But the face-to-face -face networking is where you're going to get that real impact, that real connection and those relationships with people. So I'm sure you can remember how someone made you feel when you met them. Maybe it was the tone of voice. Maybe it was how they listened to you about your business. And they were generally looking you in the eye and interested in your story. You don't forget how someone makes you feel. And if you network with people that make you feel great, this is something that you can continue those relationships and collaborate together. So from collaboration, we can grow together as women and we can help our businesses expand tenfold than if we stay in our house, sit at our desk and plug away just at social media or just at our products or just at our monthly newsletter. So I hope that helps you. The second thing I wanted to cover today was about social media. So social media is the platform for connecting you with other people and I believe that marketing is no longer the stuff you make. It's no longer the service you offer. It is the story you tell. The story you tell about your product or service. How did you come to be in business? What's the story behind the fabrics that you choose if you're a, fa a fashion designer? If you make skincare products, do you believe in cruelty-free products or vegan or organic? Or if you uh, make food products, what are the ingredients and why do you choose them, those ingredients? So people are always going to come to you because of the story behind your business. And this is where social media can be really powerful because what I love is the behind the scenes. Does anyone else in the room love the behind the scenes of looking at the messy Instagram stories that people post? Or I don't want to see the perfectly styled picture every single time. I want to see this girl that wakes up in the morning with no makeup on and says, oh my goodness, my kid just vomited on me. And then I have to get in the shower, get my hair and makeup done and then go to work. Or um, I'm in my office and my daughter is sabotaging my printer and actually trying to break my computer whilst I'm trying to type an email. These are the things that give that human face to your brand and you can show that on your social media and entertain people, make them laugh and make them relate to you. 
And I also wanted to say that I did make quite a few mistakes when I first started. So being a fitness competitor and uh, competing in fitness competitions, you know, I'd start by thinking, well, people want to see perfect photos, don't they? They want to see me in a competition. That, in fact, can make people not follow you because you're being too perfect. So, for example, last week I decided to jump out of my comfort zone and everything I do on social media is based on the feedback that I get from people. So, you can be on your story and instantly get feedback. So, you could say to someone, do you want to see more workout videos or do you want to see more recipes? Or what are you struggling with on your fitness journey right now? Or for me, I would say to people, are you having a good day or are you having a bad day? And with using the feature of polls on social media, you can get people voting on what they want you to share. You can also get the direct messages that are people that are gonna have a problem. So whenever I am designing a post, I will think about what is the problem that I can solve for one of the girls that follow me today? And they might send me a message and say, oh, I think the lifting weights is gonna make me bulky. So last week what I did was I um, dug into the archives and I had a comparison photo of myself 10 years ago and then now and those photos are really not something that I feel comfortable sharing but by sharing that, that was my highest engagement for any post that I did this week. So I'd definitely say if you are feeling like your, your social media has to be perfect, please don't feel like that. People want to see behind the scenes. They want to see the story behind your brand that makes it something that is going to be relatable for them, something that they can see themselves using, something that they can see the human face between, uh, behind why you do what you do. So finally today, I wanted to move on to talking a little bit about self-care. My journey in business over 12 years has not been an easy road. My lowest point was two years of chronic fatigue because I tend to be my own worst enemy and push myself very, very hard. Recovering from chronic fatigue was a long process and it's something that over time I've learned the boundaries that I need to place on myself. And that may be just looking at specific red flags if I'm getting really, really exhausted during the week and perhaps have boundaries around what nights I will work late, what nights I won't work late. And as mums, we know that sometimes we're not in control of that. So let's say we set aside the day for work and then we have one kid that is sick or we have another child that really is just clingy all day and we can't get what we need to do done. We end up working till midnight and then the, the process repeats itself because we don't get a good sleep because we're up all night with a baby or the toddler wakes up in the night or the child has to you know, um, have their um, worst night of the week when you had to work late. <laughs> So it's all about addressing those red flags and I would encourage you with self-care not to just think that it is one thing. We all think self-care is like, oh, well, self-care is just going to yoga or self-care is being able to have a nap. It's not. There's so many different areas. We've got psychological, emotional, spiritual, personal and professional. And there is a really good wheel of self-care and this covers these six areas. And it is by Olga Phoenix, if you want to um, have a look up afterwards. I'll also post this on my page later today. Um, so obviously <laughs> sleep is really important, but as mums, um, we survive on very little sleep. Um, but also just asking for help and, you know, going to your girlfriends or people that you meet, perhaps in forums like this, and having a talk with them about what they're going through, maybe that is one aspect of self-care that I wish I latched onto quite a few years ago. Because once you have a chat to someone and get it all off your chest of what you're going through, quite often they're gonna be like your best friend and say, why are you putting so much pressure on yourself? Or you're being so hard on yourself to get that done by that deadline. Or, you know, you're doing a really great job. Just be happy with where you're at. Try not to go too fast. And that is definitely what I would say um, in closing is to run your own race. This is super important. With social media these days, we are looking at what all our competitors do. We know immediately when they release a new product and then we're like, oh, I wish I did that. That's not, you know, I'm really behind the eight ball now. And then we feel like we have to work harder. We have to do more hours. We put more pressure on ourselves and we feel like we need to run this race as fast as we can. 
What I would say to you is if you are a person of integrity, you are a really good businesswoman and you have a great product or service, go at your own pace. Run your own race and don't compare yourself to other people. It is all about changing the way that we think about ourselves and this is where you have the power. You have the power to be your own best friend, to basically just take small steps of continuous improvement and that way you won't lead to burnout, you won't lead to that point that you are you know, imploding with the amount of work that you have to do. And it is a difficult thing to do, but I found that over 12 years in business, the reason why I have remained in business that long is that I've really tried to focus on just delivering fantastic customer service. Treat every single client as that individual and really, really focus on exceeding their expectations and giving amazing, amazing results for people and just really giving I guess that 110% to the individuals that I work with, rather than spending all my time stressing about what other people are doing, reading all the blog posts that they've done, looking at what they're doing. Because if you put all the energy that you put into looking at what your competitors are doing, and instead convert that energy into treating your current clients as absolute queens and giving them so much energy and exceeding their expectations, they will stay with you for years and years. So thank you so much for listening. And if you would like to have a chat after um, in the, um, out there, please come up and say hi. I'm happy to um, share any stories with you. And my Instagram is Living Beauty Amelia. Um, and I'd love to see what you guys are doing. And if anything that I said today resonates with you, tag me in on what you're doing, maybe in your stories this week. And um, yeah, good luck. And just be true to yourself. Thank you. Thank you.